last week, if you remember, I brought you some more information on Ghost Recon Wildlands, and you guys responded really well to it. Looks like you're really looking forward to this game. We looked at the new trailer and some of the vehicles that the game will give us the chance to play with, but today we're looking at the full map. Over the last few days on the Ghost Recon website, different cinematic shots have been released of the locations that we'll be playing in and trying to reclaim from the drug cartel. And alongside that, we now have a high resolution full map to look at as well. The map was revealed in some promotional art for the different editions of the game, and it shows off all of the different landmarks, the key mission locations, as well as the different regions and environments that we get to play in. From the image there, you can see at least three different airports are on the map. We've got one in the far southeast corner near Libertad, one over in Barchevos region in the west, and one in the northeast Via Verde. Having three airports on one map surely means they can't just be there for areas for you to explore, possibly meaning air travel will be a big part of the game. Ubisoft have previously stated that this is going to be their biggest open world game ever, even beating out things like The Crew, which was just absolutely massive. So having airports might be a good way to actually get round the map nice and quickly. Alongside those airports, you'll also see marked on the middle of the map here an icon that's labelled MOB, and that stands for Main Operating Base. And where have we heard something like that before? As soon as I heard it, my mind jumped straight to the division. Perhaps this is a central location where you and your other ghosts can come and set up camp and look to operate from, or maybe come back here at any time to stock up on supplies and orchestrate your next attack. Right now, we don't really have any information on what it is, but it does sound very similar to the base of operations in the division. This one here on the south of the map is called Jaguar, and there's another one up in the far north, but I can't make out what it's called, but it is in the Media Luna region. So perhaps as you progress through the missions and visit different regions, you'll unlock more of these places as you move. Also you'll see marked on the map are some mugshots of different members of the Santa Blanca drug cartel, the organisation that you'll be tasked with taking down and returning the land back to the Bolivian people. Now these images are likely the location of the cartel members that are crucial to the story and they'll need to be taken down one by one. From previous information it seems there will be plenty more of these members to take down and eliminate, but the ones marked here seem to be the high level ones. There's also a couple of interesting landmarks on the map here too. Up in the far north we have Death Road, which many of you have probably heard of before. The old Top Gear team actually recorded an episode of them using the road to cross the country, and as the name might suggest, it really is one of the most dangerous roads in the world. You've got the train cemetery over in the northwest. We know there will be a full train network on the map, but the majority of it is actually run down and not used anymore. There's a couple more landmarks on there as well. Who knows what their significance is right now, but they're likely to do with the story. Beyond all of those locations on the map, the developers have dropped some stunning looking shots of some of the environments that will be in the game. I've been playing them in the background in between switching to the map. And first of all, let's look at the Salt Flats. This is a location that really intrigued me when I first saw it in the previous gameplay that's been released, and here we get to see a little bit more of it. It's the section of the map where the abandoned train yard is located, which is said to be one of the key locations for the drug cartel. Besides the flats, we also get a look at the Red Canyons, which again provides an awesome change of scenery. This thing in Wildlands, going for all these different environments, just seems to fit really well for me. I'm actually really excited to see how the gameplay changes depending on what region you're in. These ancient red cliff faces seem to go on for miles and miles, but they do get interrupted by some new infrastructure, like these giant bridges that are crossing the ravines below. All of this area can be explored, and let's hope there's plenty to discover out there. 
And finally, we get a closer look at the jungle grasslands, which provide a lot more cover than the previous two locations. This environment will provide a lot of water for you to traverse as well, and you'll be powering around in the boats that we saw in the recent trailer. This is where the drug war started, when the Bolivian people started to grow the coca plant. It looks really dense in there, which could make for some perfect cover when you're attacking a drug den. Hopefully we'll get to look at the snowy mountains and the desert location soon. Once we get footage of that, I'll bring you an update right here on the channel. So, you're up to date with Wildlands again. Don't forget, E3, which is only a couple of weeks away now, will bring us some brand new gameplay and information on Wildlands, so stay tuned here and I'll bring you all the updates I can once we get them. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'm really excited, but I'm reserving my final judgment until we see gameplay at E3. I just want to be sure that the gameplay does live up to the visuals that we've seen so far. And while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.